Good morning, my name is Olivia Hankins and I am delighted to introduce the Fraser Johnston to you all today. Not only is Fraser hardworking, empathetic, and a friend to all, but she's also one of the very few members of our class that I would confidently describe as calm, cool, and collected. I imagine that Fraser's peaceful and benevolent energy makes her the perfect Zen yogi for the virtual yoga classes that she started teaching during quarantine. Although I haven't had the pleasure of having many classes with Fraser in my days at St. Mary's, I will never forget how incredibly welcoming she was to me freshman year. She was even brave enough to take the bullet and sit by the new girl on the bus ride to Victory Ranch. All jokes aside, Fraser has a beautiful servant heart and has devoted hours upon hours to serving Sukasa Ministries, where she uses her St. Mary's Spanish skills to make a real difference in our community. Fraser has a million dollar smile, and I believe that the joy she radiates is pure and genuine. I know I could sure benefit from being a little more like her. I know that she has some wise words to share with us today, so without further delay, I give to you Mary Fraser Johnston. My fifth grade class oops, sorry. had just come in from recess. Everyone is seated, but the hum of whispered conversations fills the room. The bell rings and class starts. My teacher asked us to pull out our books and open to chapter six. I frantically read ahead in the novel to make sure I could pronounce every word, even though I had done so the night before. My heart pounds. She asks, who wants to read first? I shrink down in my seat. Out of the corner of my eye, I see everyone else's hand raised confidently. I slump even further while my deskmate is almost jumping out of her seat to answer. Then I hear it, my name. I am supposed to read. I take a deep breath, clear my throat, and begin. My voice is shaky and soft. I mess up once and immediately hear whispers behind me. I go on again and yet again stumble. This was a common experience in middle school, and just one example of letting my mistakes define the way I view myself. I avoided writing on the board and would do anything not to have to read in class. Fake a sneeze, ask to go to the bathroom, or even act as though my voice was gone. Unfortunately, the latter was quite obvious. I did not want anyone to know my secret. I am dyslexic. Four years ago, you could not pay me to say that let alone voluntarily offer it in front of a crowd. In fact, I hid my secret in front of all of my friends. From my middle school perspective, my learning disability was embarrassing and something to be ashamed of. I let my failures define me, and messing up was my worst enemy. As I entered high school and classes got harder, the weaknesses started to pile up. Reading took me too long, I mixed up numbers and math, and reading aloud was still my worst nightmare. I faced a choice, struggle in silence or share my secret. Much to middle school Fraser's dismay, I chose the latter. I talked to my teachers and asked for help. To do this, I had to be okay with admitting that I was struggling. To show that, to be okay with showing vulnerability. With much help, mistakes and triumphs, I found ways to cope with my disability. I used audiobooks and made sure to check over my work. I asked for extra time when I needed it. Though I still find myself embarrassed over a spelling error or scared to read in class, I've become more confident and even found strength in my greatest insecurity, for it is part of who I am. Six years later, I'm in the conference room with the other leaders of the National Beta Club. We are practicing for the upcoming induction ceremony. It's my turn to speak. About halfway through, I mispronounced a word. I'm a little red in the face, but, much to my surprise, my friends laugh a little and then the next person starts reading. Life goes on. Don't let the fear of messing up stop you from trying. I can confidently say learning to laugh at myself has been one of the most important lessons I've learned. Teaching yoga has really tested this. Sometimes my cues don't land and everyone is just staring at me. Other times, I misspeak and everyone is in a different pose. I could get flustered and bring attention to my mistake or simply try again, explain again, and move on. 
Weakness does not define a person. It is how you respond to failure and to mistakes that shapes who you are. It is a Sisyphean choice of whether to sit in sorrow or choose hard work. You have the choice to find contentment in where you are or to dwell on what could have been. Too often, I find myself dwelling on what could have been. I put all of my attention on a bad grade or flaw I see in myself, but this causes me to miss out on all the good. Instead, I urge you to join me in choosing to embrace our mistakes. Embrace where each of us are today. As Winston Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Thank you.